Do you ever wonder if homeschool is a good choice for you? Comment below with your questions, concerns, or ask about a setting up a time to discuss how to start your homeschool journey. Hmm. Well, let me ask you a little bit, and I'm not sure how much you know about this, and, and I also kind of want to um, juxtapose this with something else, and I, I'm, I may be springing this on you, but I'm sure you can, you can handle it. So I want to ask you about simulation learning in the K-12 arena. Like, do you know how it's being used? Um, how could it be used? But I also want to contrast it with a trend that I've seen in the K-12 arena, and I'm, I'm still not quite sure what my opinion is on it, so I kind of want to get this from you. And it's gamification, and it's this trend where we're trying to kind of turn learning into a game for kids, you know, for the motivation, how do we make it fun, how do we make it a game? And I'm still not quite sure how I feel about that for K-12 because like what you're talking about when you're, you're using real life experiences, it's not a game and it's not like a game you can start over. A game is, you know, you're doing it for your motivation is for fun and for reward, you know, and real life, you know, and simulation learning, I assume is not, you know, it's not always for fun. It's, you know, for to get a product or, you know, to get something out there to get information, you know, to people. So I'm just curious, what what do you know about simulation learning in K-12? And then what is your opinion with gamification? And so like, how, how can that work with simulation learning? Or is it, you know, something totally separate, like not appropriate? Well, that, that's right. I mean, when you talk K, K through 12, there's a lot of theory. I mean, there's a few ones you can go to about the learning process. And, and what we know now, I think what we're captured in right now is uh, specialization or pri you know, a private lesson set to the person, how they like to learn versus broad scale, you know, and you know, I've, you and I have talked about this, it comes down to a game of cost, you know, for a cost, what, what can we do with students? And, and I think that should sit right there out on the table. And I don't think that it is, I think it's been politicized quite a bit in with a big P and a small P politicized as to, to what ends up in, in K through 12. But if you look at getting through high school as the, you know, pretty much the the basics for almost everybody in the United States right now is is high school. I mean, some students figure out that they can go do something before they graduate, and I wouldn't take that away from them. If, if people have a strong feeling, um, quite a few people leave college and are, are and they do very, very well. Uh, and and that's, that's the ongoing stories. So I think you have to start with, you're trying to apply a broad, broad approach to many students. And, you know, you will have results some days and you will not have results other days and, and you know a lot of edu lower you know k through 12 education is going for um standardized tests right now so right. that's taken the wind out of the sail of individuality you know everybody's been driven toward taking tests and i in later in life after college my, my undergraduate there was a few things that i had to study for for certificates and, and uh I, I learned, you know, it was really driven by uh, standardized tests, and it almost became games. You, know, so you, you mentioned gamification. It, it almost became a, a game is to almost you can memorize a lot of the things because you knew they were going to come from a question set, for instance. Okay, mm -hmm. so simulation through K through 12 is appropriate at different levels, and and there's and I don't know all the theory. You know, I'm, I'm a perpetual student of, of learning myself, and the formal theory I've looked into, but I'm I'm no expert at it, but people do develop we, we know that and, and there's certain things that um, you know a student will do that can handle at K level and, and it just changes as you as you move forward part of it has to do I, I go back to Bloom's taxonomy of cognition which is a lot big words for a chart that shows how we tend to learn things in a pyramid form you know basic information first before we're able to become the, the Picassos of whatever we choose to do that's kind of like the, the top level of whatever you're learning but for, for K through 12, it has to be appropriate and useful at any level, you know, it, it needs to be appropriate and useful. And I think you get into maybe between like third and sixth grade, where this is the important part, where we start understanding ourselves and metacognition, we call it, you know, mm -hmm. the meta learning. It's like, how did mm -hmm. I just learn that and then apply that to the next thing I learn? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you get that by... Junior high, I think in many places, you're switching teachers, you know, you're going from room to room, 
seeing different teachers and, and whatnot. You know, you start early. I think the environment's right to have one one teacher the entire period, and then I don't know, maybe junior high you start moving around and you're independent. You have to, you know, be there on time and start taking care of yourself, and and you're learning from different people. It's a good experience. You're learning from different people, but that's where you. I think we need to bring it to the forefront that there is this thing called meta learning or metacognition or meta awareness is you can, that's what makes us human. You know, we figure out how to to do things and then apply it in different ways. That was, I would probably say my biggest, two biggest surprises were what people that end up in education are trained with. Like when you go for a degree in education and you're an educator in K through 12 or whatever, what, what does that training look, look like? I looked into that a little bit. And what I found was, from what I saw, and, and I always approach things with broad scope. I, you can never see everything, and I might not have even seen the big thing, but I think a lot of the instructors at that level l- learn to teach by experience. When, when you go to get your undergraduate degree, many programs, the way it's structured is you sit through the very types of things that you're going to use or the methods that you're going to use to teach K through 12, you know, especially like K through 8. K through eight, where we're, we're forming so fast as it is anyway, through all those times. So, so uh, y- you know, to understand that, I was I was surprised that these stu- these graduates of education don't have theory as much as I thought they would. I thought they would be able to understand a student because they'd go, okay, in this case, this theory would apply. No, it was, it was quite different. It was a very experiential process to become a teacher that I understand. You know, and the the other part, the other part about this. It is that when I walked in that there are some simple concepts in meta understanding and meta learning that we should be taught in sixth grade. I'm thinking plus or minus around sixth grade is say, okay, everybody, guess what? You've learned a lot of things here and it's going to be for your entire life learning all kinds of things, how to, how to relate with a person, certain person, with people in general, math, <laughs> you know, everything. We used to have phonics, even penmanship, mm-hmm. <laughs> things like that, mm-hmm. you know. But the, my biggest surprise was that or maybe a minor mission of mine is to say at an earlier age, certainly by eighth grade, but something like sixth, seventh, eighth, is say, you know what, you, you, you have to manage the way you learn. You're going to have all these teachers and courses along the way. You're going to have to, and I don't want to put it have to, that, that becomes an external you know, motivation, it is life is fun, learn how to enjoy learning, and there's ways, ways about it. So bloom's taxonomy you know people aren't familiar with that you, you start out with remembering so if if any one of us had even our, as an adult learner try to learn something if i wanted to learn flower arrangement i don't even know the words yet you, you know if i wanted to be a professional flower arranger you know i would have to learn the lexicon some relationships some concepts and then you could start applying that so that's the first couple of rungs of, of blooms just to give people an idea of what that what that's all about and then when you get to the upper levels, it's more interpretive, critiquing, and then finally creating, like artfully creating with, with whatever you're, you're working with. And I'm really surprised that isn't part of the curriculum. It's telling me that I, you know, maybe that's just me. You need to really get a scientific study out there to understand across the board. Would that really help? You know, would that help everybody if they understood, you know, what it means to learn? People are turned off by learning. And, and because it's always externally driven for the first so many years, you know, by college, you should be adapting to making it, your, you know, whatever you chose to study is to be your life. So, uh, so simulation, I'm going to bring it back to your question here. With those questions, I think within that, that period, you could teach meta learning, the concept of meta learning. It's, it's a thing we should all work with. People have studied it. They've, they've structured it. That's, that's what I'm saying is we don't get told that. Behind the scenes, teachers know this, instructors know this, and they're using it. But the but it would work out a whole lot better if the students understood that's what was going on. Is that this is mm. why are we doing this? Oh, it's because I needed you to get, get. You have to start percolating on another level here. You have to get past the, the words being spoon fed vocabulary, and that's your only test. You know, that's just getting started. The rest of it is if you want to do this, you you work up this Bloom's taxonomy. So so the simulation could be used. Uh, in K through 12, I mean, of course, you're going to sit here and you're say, you can use it anywhere, but it has to be done effectively. And I think the instructor has to have a good grasp of what's happening with that, you know, and what, what goes wrong and what goes right with it. And, 
and uh, I ran it the first time. I was just learning it the first time that I ran it. There was nobody around that instructed me. I didn't go through training for the for these simulations. I had to learn them, you know. So mm -hmm. that was something I could share with the students later on. I'd say, you know that pain you're feeling? Well, the summer that I decided I was going to use simulation, I sat around for two weeks and figured this all out. I said, in beautiful weather when I should be doing something else, I was figuring out, I, was, I went through your pain in other words. It's shared experience in that, that sense. Mm. So it humanizes it quite a bit, and I sympathize with them. And, and so K through 12, in, in that world, there's a lot of computer technologies in these schools it has to do with cost and results, you know, in a broad sense, not just dollars, but where any instructor in that area can make an, use simulation effectively. And, and I'm not going to necessarily hold it to computer simulation because you could have thought experiments. I mean, that's really good for critical thinking, right? So don't even get away mm -hmm. from that computer, which is distracting with probably a keyboard or touchscreen or whatever else, whatever else your device is it, just, no, let's just think about that for a minute. And, and every few weeks, I would just, um, you, you know, uh, impulsively stop a class and have us think about whatever it is that we're working on. Because it was just too much chunking along with just too much stepwise up a ladder. It's like, this should mean something to you. Let me try to help you with that. And you just have to look. Now, now I had paying customers that, <laughs> you know, that these students themselves knew they were on the line for every course. By the way, when they would come into my course, I said, because this is a business course, I would ask them, do you know how much you're paying every day you're sitting in here? So I used to have them think about it, and it was in the hundreds of dollars per day. <laughs> so yeah. I said, for this course, I said, you're sitting here. Are you going to get that much money out of it? So that's how much I tried to draw them into the business thinking. But but nevertheless, mm -hmm. with simulation, um, you know, some, some of them took, and that's what I think it's really good to have you know, in K through 12 simulation, I'm not sure. Again, I, I can't speak to that because I, I didn't have the experience of teaching in that, that realm, that age grouping there. But it has to be, the simulation comes with a lot of management. Uh, you know, you have to work things toward the outcome that you would like to see your students have. And more and more education is being measured as an outcome, you know, outcome-based. So uh, right. I didn't, you know, I've looked up some of what is available through K through 12 and it's not, that organized um you know there's a there's a lot of pockets of supply there and then maybe a big publisher will pick up the simulations or not but there's a lot of independent small companies out there that are, you know have really good things but it's hard to sell into the um education sector and and so that is part of the answer here you know you have to looking at it as the whole delivery simulation for k through 12 it's Students that I know of that have sat through set and forget simulations were very displeased with it. They felt like a, the instructor was just walking away, like no work. They weren't doing any work for it. Do you ever wonder if homeschool is a good choice for you? Comment below with your questions, concerns, or ask about a setting up a time to discuss how to start your homeschool journey.